What's going on gamers? Today I have something a lot of you have asked for. More of the story of Thorn and the last word. So let's jump into the shoutouts now. I want to give a shout out to Mega Marshmallow, Majestic Sniper, Justin Dolliver, Shadow Wolf, and Gavin Fairchild for also following me on Twitter. Now with each expansion of Destiny we grow closer and closer to the full story of Jaren Ward, the original owner of the last word, and Dredgen Yor, the owner of Thorn. Now I've had a few theories over the past year but something I never understood was the death of Dredgen Yor. How could it be possible? It was one of the reasons I thought that maybe Jaren had changed to Dredgen and hesitated to pull the trigger when coming face to face with his protege, Shin Malfur. But a detail that Bungie said just before the Taken King launch was that the characters Jaren Ward and Dredgen Yor were old friends in an interview with Game Informer. So it raises the question, how could Shin beat an accomplished gunfighter like Dredgen Yor with the list of legendary guardians that Yor had killed? The answer is something that Dredgen saw in Shin Malfur when Shin was only a boy. Shin recounts the meeting. Palamon was ash. I was only a boy. My face caked in soot, snot, and sorrow. I assumed Jaren, my friend, our guardian, the savior of Palamon, would always protect us, could always save us. But I was a fool. Jaren and the others, only a handful, but still our best hunters, our hardest hearts, had left three sons prior, tracking fallen after the bandits had caused a stir. The stranger, the other, arrived the following day. He rarely spoke, took a room, took our hospitality. I was intrigued by him as I was with Jaren when he first arrived. But the stranger was cold, distant, damaged, I thought. But I wasn't afraid, not yet. Only a child, I knew the monsters of our world to walk like men, but they were not. They were something alien, forearmed and savage. The stranger was polite, but solemn. I took him for a sad, broken man, and he was. Though at the time, I didn't understand how that could make one dangerous. As with Jaren, father made an effort to keep me away from the stranger. It wouldn't matter. As the silhouette approached, fear held tight. The dark figure towered over me, looking into me, through me. He smiled, my knees weak, all lost. Then he turned and walked away, leaving ruin and a heartbroken, terrified boy in his wake without a second glance. I've been chasing that stranger's shadow ever since. I am certain that the shadow that young Shin Malfour remembers is Dredgen Yor. The reason I'm certain is that Yor had a conversation with Jaren's ghost right after killing Jaren. It's the Grimoire Thorn 4. If you put Yor and Jaren's ghost in the unknown roles, you see an interesting conversation. And in that conversation, Yor admits he knew Shin as a little boy, and that he too saw something special about him. This is how the conversation may have played out. Such darkness. Impressed. Far from it. To each their own. His light is faded. His light is gone. You are an infection. I am that which will cleanse. You are a monster. <laughs> An old friend once saw me the same. He was right, and had we met earlier, so too would you be. You dare defend yourself? All you've done as anything but monstrous? No more than a hurricane. Then you're a force of nature? I am all that is right. You may not see it for the lack of looking or blind ignorance, but I am all that is good. You've just murdered a good man. He shot first. Yet you stand. <laughs> Guess he missed. He never misses. First time for everything. His cannon? Nice piece of hardware. Well worn, but clean. Smooth hammer. It was his prize. Guess he put too much faith in the wrong steel. Is that where your faith lies? In steel? Not for some time. My steel is only an extension. My faith is in the shadow. Then my light is an affront to all you are. I am your truest enemy. One of many. Would you end me? Not you. Not now. The shadow knows mercy. The shadow knows no such thing. Then what? The other. What other? The dead man's charge. The boy? You'd end him as well? If it comes to that, we'll see. I won't let you have the child. Hmm. 
Been long enough now. Think maybe he's a man. You cannot have him. Not yet. I won't let you. That you could stop me is an amusing thought. Here, take it. Why? Give the apprentice his master sword. It's a gift. You cannot have him. You fear for his light? He is special. Yes. I am aware. You're trying to tempt him. You're feeding his anger. The gun is a memento, nothing more. You claim to be a vessel, a hollow shell where once a man stood, but that is just a lie. The man is still in you. There is no man here. I am now, and for the rest of time, only Dredkin Yor. The Eternal Abyss? So, not all the forgotten languages are dead. Hide behind whatever titles you wish. It is still a facade. No force of nature would play such games. Games? The cannon. You wish to tempt the boy. To spur him on and fuel his rage. There is intent there. The action of a man, monstrous, mad, or otherwise. You are nothing more. And what value does your conclusion bring, flawed as it may be? That a hurricane can only be weathered, not stopped, not redirected. A force of nature is uncaring and without intent. But a man... Yes? A man is none of those things. A man can be killed. And there it is. There what is? A sliver of hope. Now the first thing I want to point out here is that the Guardian that held Thorn chose his name from a forgotten language that Jaren's ghost knew. Now in that forgotten language, Dredgen Yor means Eternal Abyss. That's what Yor saw himself as. He didn't want to be known as the good Guardian he once was. He saw himself as primal chaos with no beginning or end, as something profound and valid for all time, unchanging. Yor said he is here to cleanse. There is also a point when the ghost said that Jaren never misses. Now with the power that Yor had feeding on the light similar to the hive, Ward probably didn't miss Yor. It's just Yor by this point is probably something far more than what he was when he first hid himself beneath darkness, no longer just meat and bones. Now an odd thing I notice is the theme of special. Yor's ghost in the previous card said that they were all special, now I'm assuming meaning guardians. So is that what Yor and Ward saw in Shin Ma Fur, or was it something else? Ward's ghost is worried that Yor hopes to turn Mafur into the Eternal Abyss. So what happened at Dwindler's Ridge when the words, Yours not mine, were said a second time? Shin Mafur remembered the events thusly. We stood silent, the sun high. Seconds passed, feeling more like hours. He looked different. He seemed now to be weightless, effortless in an existence that would crush a man burdened by conscience. My gaze remained locked as I felt heat rising inside me. The other spoke. Been a while. I gave no reply. The gunslinger's sword? His cannon? That was a gift, said Yor. My silence held as my thumb caressed a perfectly worn hammer at my hip. An offering from me to you. The heat grew, centered in my chest. I felt like a coward the day that Jaren Ward died, and for many cycles after. But here... I only felt the fire of my light. The other probed. Nothing to say? He let the words hang. I've been waiting for you for this day. His attempt at conversation felt mundane when judged against all that had come before. Many times I thought you faltered, given up. All I'd lost, all who suffered, flashed rapid through my mind, intercut with a dark silhouette walking toward a frightened, weak, coward of a boy. The fire burned in me. The other continued. But here you are. This is truly an end. As his tongue slipped between the syllables, my gun hand moved as if of its own will. Reflex and purpose merged with anger, clarity, and an overwhelming need for just that. An end. In step with my emotion, the fire within burst into focus. Through my shoulder, down my arm, as my finger closed on the trigger of my third father's cannon. Two shots, two bullets engulfed in an angry glow. The other fell. I walked to his corpse. He never raised his cursed thorn, the jagged gun with the festering sickness. 
I looked down at the dead man who caused so much death, my shooter still embraced by the dancing flames of my light. A sadness came over me. I thought back to my earliest days of Palamon, of Jaren. Leveling my cannon to the dead man's helm, I paid one final tribute to my mentor, my savior, my father, and my friend. I said the words, yours, not mine. As I closed my grip, allowing Jaren's cannon, now my own, to have the last loud word. So a question I have gotten a lot over the past year is why does the golden gun look like the last word? And I didn't have an idea, not until now. With the fire burning within Shin, he fired two shots that were bathed in an angry glow. With the last word still engulfed in the flames of his light, Shin fires a third shot. The special ability within Shin Malfur was not only he was a guardian, but he held the power of the golden gun. Now, if this is the first time that a guardian had the right mix of reflex, purpose, anger, and clarity, then it may also explain why every golden gun activation looks like the last word. Shin Mafur may be the guardian who on that fateful day perfected the technique to harness one's light and fire three rounds of sunfire. Why did Shin's power manifest itself as sunlight? Brother Vance of the Cult of Osiris has said, the sun's light purifies all that it touches. Such is the gift of the golden gun. Its light blesses those who would stand with the wielder and burns away foes foolish enough to stand against it. Many would agree with the dark power that Yor possessed to purify him would seem the right way to win a fight. So that's the end of the story. Dragon Yor is dead, but there's still something missing from this story. Who was Yor before? You've heard of the last word, but you haven't heard of the gun that came before it. People always forget about the other one, the first one. They remember its twin, the last word, because it's an easier story to tell, but it's not the whole story. Truth is, there were two of them back then in those lawless days before the city was anything more than a rumor. The last word and the first curse, sisters, partners. But one was lost to fire. Now there are thousands of tales of the first curse. Which one would you tell? Well guys, I am out of here. Now before I go, if you want an alternate look at the content of this video, go check out Mylan's take on it. But as always guys, have a good one.